and welcome back to another video by Skull Hall Education. In this video we're going to be addressing the scales problem um, and I'm going to be in this video specifically describing a little bit about what the scales problem is and how we're going to go about solving it. So the scales problem is that if we were to get a set of scales and we had a set of, a set of weights we need to arrange them such that the scales are as balanced as possible. Right? So imagine we have a set of scales with a left hand side and a right hand side exactly as you would with a normal set of scales and we have an array of weights right we're going to call we're going to say that this array has the weights two four five six and three in them right let's give one more two so we've got six sets of weights right so we've got we got these weights inside this array we want to arrange these on a set of scales and put each one on the left hand side and the right hand side such that the scales are as balanced as possible now heuristically, as a human being, if you look at this, you could probably begin decomposing this in your head a little bit and saying, right, two and two would be four. So maybe put the two twos on one side and the four on the other side. But then if we start looking at this five, six and three, we can then begin seeing that there's going to be a huge imbalance here, right? But, but that's hard enough looking at six numbers like that. Now imagine looking at a thousand numbers like that or 10,000 numbers looking at uh, like that. That's what that's where we need computational power for, right? And this is a super complex problem if we start looking at it on that scale. So imagine we have that array of weights. What we're going to do is the first thing we're going to have to do is create a random binary string. Now, why are we doing that? Because we don't want to start from somewhere specified. We want to start from a random point. This binary string is going to have to be the length of this array. Right in this set, in this specific case, right, that's going to be six. So, as you guys have probably already guessed from me saying that, you're going to have to do an array dot length, right? Absolutely. So, when we get our random binary array of length six, which let's just give the example zero one zero one zero one. We're going to have to look at this and use this binary string as a way of separating these weights into the left hand side and the right hand side. Specifically, we're going to be using the zeros for the left hand side and the ones for the right hand side. So what does this mean? This means that once this binary string has been created and we apply it to this array right here, zero is going to mean it goes to the left hand side. So two, five, and three are going to end up on the left hand side. So that's right, left hand side is equal to two, plus five plus three and the right hand side is going to be the rest so it's going to be let's see four six and two so four plus six plus two right what these values now give us is an ability to measure the fitness of that binary string this is important because we want to get the optimum fitness. That means the lowest number or the lowest difference between the weights on both sides. In this specific case, the fitness is going to be equal to what well, 2 plus 5 plus 3, so 10 minus 4 plus 6 plus 2, 12, which is minus 2, but we don't take into consideration minuses, so the fitness is going to be equal to 2. Right? The reason the way we go about doing that real quickly, so I'll just cover that now, um, is by doing math dot absolute, right? That's how you do it. It's effectively like adding a modulus. So that's how we get the fitness of the binary string. Once we have the fitness, what we're going to do is we're going to have a um, an optimization algorithm, right? And that, in this specific case, is going to be hill climb. Why? Because it's the easiest, it's the best, and it's the one where you really can't go wrong, right? We can have a look at simulated annealing at another date. But let's have a look at hill climb for now. And within that optimization, we're going to have to look at creating a small change in the binary to then begin comparing the fitness of the old binary string and the new binary string to see if we're going to iterate and change 
in the next iteration or if we're going to keep the same binary string. So that's a quick description of what we're going to be doing and how we're going to be solving this. What I'd like to add is that if you're specifically a student where you're sitting the code runner exam looking for the answer to these questions, you would have been provided a class called CS2004 that I'll be running through and a scale solution class that I'll also be running through. These should be classes that are provided to you. If, you're, if not, and you have no idea what I'm talking about at the moment and you're just looking to learn this, these two classes are available on Scholar Hall, as is the uh, finished product. And I will be running through why both these classes are here and what they contain. But for now, create a project, create a scale solution class, create a CS2004 class, and then create another class. I've called it my class. You can call it whatever you want with a main inside. And once you've done that, we should be ready to move on.